Jesus was just passing through Jericho. Just passing through. My name is Dale. I'm one of the pastors here at Redeemer Bible Church. And this is Monday, May the 11th, and this is the Daily Word. Very thankful to be back with you um, after Pastor John and Pastor Costi and Pastor Kyle um, have taken us all the way through um, uh, Luke 18 here uh, on the Daily Word. I was um, I was the one who was able to start us in the Gospel of Luke way back uh, several weeks ago as uh, we began this Gospel, and I'm very thankful to be back here with you in this very crucial part of Jesus's ministry and this very crucial um, story that's in the New Testament. Um, so in Luke 19, you have Jesus in the, in the story of Zacchaeus, and you have um, you know the ten minas, and you've got uh, just setting up right before the triumphal entry. So we're kind of heading towards the end of Jesus's ministry here on Earth, and um, it's very it's a very interesting um, story with Zacchaeus. Now Zacchaeus was a rich man, um, so not only was he a rich man, but he was also a tax collector. Now. That means he wasn't a very popular man for sure. And uh, the people that um, he would have been surrounded by, I'm, uh, it's very easy to say that um, he was probably hated by most of them um, at best. Um, it might have even been worse. They, they, a lot of them might have wanted him dead actually. Um, so not only was he a tax collector, but he was very rich. And um, Jesus, um, doing what Jesus does, he's, he's walking the countryside, right? He's he's doing ministry. He's and he's passing through Jericho. So we have the sense at the very beginning that Jesus did not intend, at least in his his uh, humanity, to stay in Jericho. But Zacchaeus um, wanted to see the Savior, wanted to see the Messiah. Um, so he climbed up a sycamore tree. This rich man. Think about this. Um, that's not the behavior of rich people, right? That's not the behavior of, of tax collectors. They're not going to climb up a tree to go see somebody. Um, I'm sure there was a sense of self-importance. There was a, you know, I'm 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 more wealthy than anybody else around me, and here is this wealthy man climbing up a sycamore tree to see this rabbi walk by, a rabbi who was just passing through, by the way, and. Uh, so Zacchaeus does, he climbs up in the sycamore tree and Jesus takes notice of it. He says, hey Zacchaeus, um, come down from that tree. And then by the way, I'm gonna stay with you today. Open up your house to me. Now, uh, this was, for the, for the religious, this was shameful. Uh, you don't enter into the house of a sinner. Uh, entering into the house of a, in those days meant that you're breaking bread with them uh, you're you're entering into their their surroundings and you're their guest right and um, this would have been a very scandalous thing to do for Jesus and it didn't stop him he did it anyways and uh, the story unfolds and really the big part of this story for us to really to really understand is is followers of Christ is what Jesus reveals about himself um, through this story. So I want to I want to read verse 9 uh, and verse 10 of, uh, of Luke 19. So if you have your Bible with you, please open it up and join me in Luke 19. Um, we'll start in verse 9 and 10. And I want to I want to draw something out about um, the character of God that's revealed through this story. So Jesus says to him in verse 9, uh, talking to Zacchaeus, now remember, he's a tax collector, he's a sinner, right? Jesus says this, Today, salvation has come to this house since he is also a son of Abraham, which, which is, you know, leads to a couple different points. So there's a lineage here. So the promise of, Abra of Abraham falls upon Zacchaeus' house. But there was also, um, there was faith. Zacchaeus had faith, right? And, um, when he climbed that tree, he was he was revealing faith that God had already given him, and uh, Jesus was just making this known at this point 
uh, salvation is entering into your house. And here's what Jesus says about himself. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. And there certainly was nobody as lost as Zacchaeus, uh, a tax collector, a rich man. He would not have been liked, right? And Jesus saves him. Not only saves him, he sought him. Jesus was the one who looked up into the tree and said, Zacchaeus, come out of the tree and let's go to your house and have a conversation. Now, as Christians, we know that uh, through the scripture that nobody seeks after God, right? So Romans, Romans 3.11 says this, that no man seeks after God. Uh, what, what does that mean? Well, we cannot see, we can't seek after God. We're dead in our transgressions, according to Ephesians chapter two. We're dead. We don't, dead people don't seek, right? Dead people don't um, have eyes to see. They don't have ears to hear. Um, so it's, it's actually worse than that because in our flesh, we would never, we would never seek after God, even if we had the option to. And um, it's God who seeks and it's God who saves. Um, those who hide and run from him, right? We know that uh, through Genesis chapter 3. Um, as Adam and Eve have already sinned, and they're hiding themselves in the garden. And what is it, what does God reveal about his character there? It was God who was walking in the garden and called out to them. Where are you? Why are you hiding from me? So God revealed his character, that he is a God who seeks, and he is a God that saves. Um Jesus came to earth for this purpose. He came to seek and he came to save. And uh, it really is a part of God's ongoing story. I mean, that's even happening today, continues to reveal his character in seeking and saving the lost. Because Jesus did not come to earth um, to be a good teacher. He did not come to earth to teach morality. Um, Jesus came to earth to save and rescue doomed sinners, just like Zacchaeus and just like me and just like you. So this morning, um, I'm hopeful, or the today as you read this, I'm hopeful that um, even in this little passage here in, all, in the scripture, that you will marvel and then meditate upon God's nature, that he is a seeker and that he and he alone has the power to save. Now, as the rest of the week goes on, where we're about to head into the triumphal entry, and there's a lot of uh, good passages, obviously, that we're going we're gonna to go through together this week. So I hope you come back tomorrow and join me, and I look forward to seeing you then. It's Pastor Dale.